Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast, presented by Strategic Treasure, your source for interesting Treasury news, analysis, and insights in your car, at the gym, or wherever you decide to tune in. On this episode of the podcast, host Craig Jeffrey continues the 2021 Outlook series with Royston DaCosta, Assistant Group Treasurer at Ferguson PLC, on Part 2, Treasury Support of the Business. Topics of discussion center around liquidity during the depths of the pandemic and throughout the recovery, and key success factors to help navigate potential changes in the year ahead. Listen in to find out more. Royston, welcome back to the Treasury Update podcast. Hello, Craig. Good to speak to you again. This particular uh, podcast and discussion stemmed out of our last conversation where we we kept uh, talking about uh, some items and we wanted to capture some of that discussion uh, because we had spoken earlier about how does Treasury, how did Treasury support the business, particularly earlier on in the uh, pandemic, uh, the move to the work from home, um, and then we wanted to extend that into what's, you know, what Treasury does to help support the business and communicate with the business going forward. But I was wondering, uh, in the beginning, if you could just do a short, short overview of the four areas, um, just a summary of those four areas that we spoke about the first time in terms of how Treasury supported the business. Of course, Craig. I mean, none of these areas are really new in some in, in, to be fair um, and I think the fact that everywhere you look and you read about the way that Treasury played a key or pivotal part in in, 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 in a lot of companies uh, in navigating uh, through this pandemic I think just um, reinforces the point that these areas shouldn't be taken lightly frankly and I think the first one's no surprise cash loan liquidity pretty much every company looked at that immediately uh, as soon as the pandemic became apparent. And we were very fortunate in, in, at Ferguson that we had sufficient facilities in place and sufficient headroom because obviously like any good company our size, we'd already ensured that we had facilities to withstand our normal business requirements for at least three to four years uh, ahead. But we were also then making sure that you know, in terms of short-term liquidity, that we had that uh, additional headroom, if you like. So I think from a liquidity perspective, we had more than enough uh, to, to keep us uh, and to sustain us through that period. But we shouldn't forget that when we look at, um, you know, sort of cash flow and liquidity, we're also looking at the ongoing business. And therefore, that's the area I felt that from a treasury perspective, certainly in my role, I would became uh, involved with the business in not just looking to get more information from them, but also looking to, in, in some respects, educate some of our colleagues, but also to be able to impart to them the, the critical kind of metrics and also the, the, the sort of data that we required, you know, sort of on almost a day-to-day basis, um, you know, obviously in terms of, you know, what was like, the, what were the default rates like, you know, what, were our customers continuing to pay on time, um, you know, sort of what orders looking healthy. These were, you know, sort of more weekly calls to be fair. But, you know, when I say daily, I'm, th- I'm thinking in terms of, you know, each day was, 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 was something that we, we were having relatively close visibility on because it was something unknown to us at that time for leave alone the governments, uh, companies were not sure where this was going to lead. So I think we've all, heard the topic cash flow forecasting mentioned so much in the past and certainly is continues to be a, a top uh, um, area of concern for a lot of treasures. But in this particular case, I think it really developed into to, 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 to science of its own because of the fact that, you know, we were reliant on um, trying to get a feel for what um, our customers were facing on the ground, so to speak. Um, and I think, From a business perspective, it's worth mentioning that with the business that we're in, Ferguson, you know, we're the leading distributor of plumbing and heating products to trade. We are fairly decentralized and currently we are operating in North America and the US and Canada. And our largest business is in the US. We're in every every one of the 50 states. But we like to pride ourselves on the fact that 
we have very good solid relationships with our customers. And this played a key part in helping to navigate through this pandemic because at a time when you're not quite sure what's going to happen tomorrow kind of thing, um, our associates on the ground, due to the strong relationships they had with all our customers and the supply chain, they were able, they were able to have fairly good visibility of where any potential bottlenecks were occurring or in fact, whether there were going to be any potential defaults. And thankfully, you know, this wasn't as big an issue for us because of the fact that all of our relationships, the majority of our relationships have such strong relationships that we could have, uh, we, we, we could actually fend off some, any potential issues occurring. Are these bottlenecks, um, this could be something that delays an order, something that delays payment? Is that what you're referring to? Correct. That's more more likely to be uh, a payment delay, I would say, but also in terms of um, being able to have that visibility on the ground, not just in terms of our customers, but also in terms of some of the manufacturers that are supplying our customers. And if you look at some of the municipalities that we deal with, I can't go into too much detail because I'm not an expert on this, but my understanding of the US, there's an ability where we could, if we wanted to uh, secure Lien on some of the payments because of the way the system is set up and the relationships we have with the different stakeholders in that process. I want to come back to the the area we talked about the first part, you know, this, this access to liquidity, capital, and communication that we started on, and um, and come back to that at the at the end, and then in this middle section, you know, you've you've started talking about um, how the business is close; they have their fingers on the pulse; they're communicating well. Um, maybe you could talk about um, how the business gets close to their their customers. Oh, absolutely, and and look, I understand that. Normally speaking, from when we work in treasury, we don't typically get close to the customer or even the associates, our colleagues that work with the customers. It's not been necessary. But in this particular case, it was quite insightful for us to understand um, the reasoning for how confident our colleagues were about dealing with customers and I would say being certain about the fact that they weren't going to default or um, that they were in a good place. And a lot of the customers were quite open with our associates. And this is not unusual because the nature of our business is such that uh, the majority of our customers are, are, have been customers for us for a long time. And it's nature of this type of industry where you're going to have relationships with some of the major suppliers anyway. So if you want to operate and you want to continue operating successfully, it is actually in your best interest to, to keep up your payments and to ensure that you have a good relationship with your supplier. It kind of makes sense, right? But the other factor I think we, we I'd like to draw attention to is the fact that our associates through this pandemic, when they spoke to our customers, uh, particularly on the receivable side, their first question to them wasn't when you're going to pay us, the first question to them was, how are you? And how are your families? Are you keeping well? And it sounds, that, I don't want to sound that, that, that's not glib at all. That's not being disingenuous. This is exactly how our business has operated and continues to operate. It's about relationships. It's about building those long-term relationships so that when you come across times like this, you can see that there's, where are we're there, Obviously, we're a business. We're not, we're not naive about it. But we're also there to ensure that our customers are successful because it's going to benefit us as much as it benefits them. And I think that's an important point. I've read stories and anecdotes about particularly the US where uh, some of our associates have gone the extra mile, I'm told, where, and it's not unusual as well, I believe, in terms of you know, in, in the US kind of uh, market. But certainly our business, we've had associates that, you know, gone to their, open their store on a weekend for a particular customer because they needed product urgency or someone needed to um, meet an order on a Monday and they rang up the branch manager because they knew them quite well uh, on a Friday night said, look, can you get me this product? And you have 
drive three, four hours across a uh, state just to get the order. I mean, these are not unusual stories, I'm told. And this is part of the reason for our success uh, in, in our business. It's, it's, it's so um, kind of um, encouraging for me to hear and to see this because it, it's what we believe is, you know, good customer service and, and does both bear through some of the kind of uh, results that we've seen from this particular pandemic where our customers have stood by us as much as we've stood by them. That example of driving maybe even three or four hours or driving to another. I think, sorry, Craig, when I say three or four hours, for us here in the UK, three or four hours is a long time. I'm sure the US is nothing. It's probably more like seven or eight hours in the US. <laughs> well, the, the, the point though, I think with... Um, you know, there's been a shortage, I mean, due to, um, you know, manufacturing slowdowns or shutdowns uh, due to the pandemic and in some robust demand, um, it's hard uh, to get all the materials. I'm sure it's hard for individual associates. And if you can solve that need, that issue somehow, not just say, I don't have it, but I can get it somewhere else. That's, that's, a, that's a powerful way to be with your customers. And you're absolutely another good point you make there. So another kind of um, um, strength that we've been able to um, uh, show in, in particular with our customers, wherever we're based, is we're able to deliver not just the product in the time frame they require, but you, it's critical mass. If you're talking about the large industrial sometimes uh, uh, projects that we get involved in, you know, not many companies are in a position to deliver, you know, sort of thousands of SKUs to the customer in within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and that's what we do. That's part of our, you know, sort of our business model. We, 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 we deliver, uh, we're able to deliver these uh, large quantities of product in, in, within a short space of time. Yeah, again, this is where our customers value that level of service. And it, it's good. And it's not just the large uh, industrial. Uh, that's a good example of that type of uh, scenario. But certainly for the uh, we. <laughs> There, I call them the mom and pop type of business. We have uh, many of those type of customers as well. And in those cases, they tend to, I mean, this is not the benefit they get, but in some cases, in those cases, they tend to use our, uh, our warehouses as a kind of storage place because they haven't got, the, you know, their own storage uh, facilities for, to hold that level, you know, amount of product. So it's quite useful for them to be able to also, um, you know, partner with us in those type of instances. Yeah, leveraging leveraging your balance sheet and your warehouse, uh, that's that is <laughs> that's a core way of supporting your business. Now, you you had a when we were talking before we started recording, you had mentioned uh, a way you described that being in deep with your customers. What was how did you what term did you use? I used an English expression, which um, I'm not sure how it translates into to, to North American, but it's called um, meeting your. Um, um, it's getting uh, an, uh, sort of a feel for what's at the coal face, coal face spelled C-O-A-L face. And it's really um, uh, a referral to the coal mining days, I think, in this in the mm -hmm. UK, where, you know, if you are the coal face, you're really down, you know, on in the trenches, I think is the ex expression that you mentioned earlier. So it's a kind of akin to that, really. Um, and, and I think for me, what I was really trying to uh, express is the fact that, you know, I don't want to think that we in Treasure are in some sort of ivory tower because clearly you can't afford to be, you know, you have to understand how the business operates best of times when there's a pandemic. But I think in this particular case, what was interesting is the fact that as much as we are, I say we we're familiar with all the, uh, the general kind of uh, reporting mechanisms we have within Ferguson, it required us to take it to the level of where we were actually having that conversation. And this is where the coal face comes in the people that were liaising with the customers on the ground. So they were able to give us a good feeling. And this wasn't just anecdotal. This was actual, you know, sort of, you know, they were talking to, you know, customer, Mr. Jones, who said, or Mrs. Jones for that matter, who said, um, you know what, we've got a good order book. The issue we've got at the moment isn't um, kind of, uh, finding new orders or being able to, to, to meet those orders, it's, it's about liquidity. So there was one, uh, one of the issues that some of our customers uh, face initially anyway, was just 
uh, the ability to source or get access to the funding that you know some of the governments and the regulatory authorities locally had provided. It that was just something that you know, they had to overcome. But I think didn't thankfully didn't last for long. But it was quite encouraging for us to hear that they weren't really concerned, if you like, from a perspective that you know there was going to be a meltdown in the economy. I mean, I know there's been other aspects of the economy that have suffered, unfortunately. But um, it was kind of reassuring that you know in terms of our industry and those other industries i'm sure you're aware of that that wasn't as severe yeah no that's good and i, I i'm going to try to remember the coal face you know being being down in the mines working together willing to get dirty you know that i think you gave some good examples of that and it, that's going to stick with me so maybe maybe you'll be responsible for making that uh that expression jump the pond on the, the treasury communication and treasury work for the business, you know, support of the business, you know, you know, post the initial s- the stages and, you know, moving on, um, you know, you've, you've mentioned the need to communicate and back and forth with like your associates, for example. Um, what are those things that you, uh, that you've, that you've seen that, that have worked uh, well? Um, I, and I would say it's communication in both directions. What, what's gone on there? Yeah, it's a good question, Craig. I mean, I'd like to think that in the first place, we have a very strong network within Ferguson. And I'm talking about not social network necessarily. I'm talking about a network of colleagues that work uh, closely together on a day-to-day basis. So that, that in itself was a good starting point. Um, but in terms of additional lessons learned. I think it helped us to recognize that we could turn around very, very quickly the necessary tools and the people that needed to be involved and engaged in the calls that we had initially. And I have to keep going back to that because as much as we have all the technology that we have, it was being able to communicate using a simple phone call or Zoom meeting or or Teams meeting to to flush out and to discuss at length in some cases what exactly what's happening at the coal face. Sometimes the system isn't able to capture all that. And so it was good to be able to, to, to learn from that and also to share with our colleagues because sometimes you don't always have that opportunity and perhaps they're not necessarily given the, um, the, the, the kind of the, the arena to, 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 to kind of hear that information. So we were able to share with those colleagues about what we've done in Treasury for the group by making sure that they felt you know, reassured if they needed it, that we had all the right facilities in place, we had the funding in place. And you know, they, you know, this wasn't, we were, you know, it's not like we were going to be short of cash tomorrow or any of those kind of issues that were going to happen. We just wanted to be very prudent and want to plan ahead like any good business. And in turn, we need the information that they had access to and also be able, to, be able to steer them to what information was most important to us. And as I said before, it was about those orders, it was about the customers are continuing to pay, what was the default rate like, you know, it was it getting higher, was it was it staying the same, was it getting lower? And, you know, keeping a constant monitor on those sort of metrics as we're going through those calls from week to week, apart from the other meetings that were, be, were being had, obviously, within the organization, just to ensure that the right reporting was getting, um, was coming through, and, and obviously, in terms of what being, um, being, that being fed up all the way to the board. Is that, um, that communication getting more information about orders and, you know, payments, are they slowing down, um, or defaults, is that... Is that getting additional information that confirms, and I'm saying this isn't either or, it may not be an either or, is that confirming what you're hearing and seeing coming through the, you know, the bank accounts, right, the, the collection activity, or is it? Yes, no, um, it's a bit of both, actually, to be honest. I mean, you've got to think of the time lag as well. So when we were looking at the pandemic, Back in March last year, a lot was coming through the bank account was based on orders that had been put through in January or perhaps even December previous year. So we couldn't really rely on the cash that we were seeing being collected in March because that was it was you know not representative of what was happening at the time. 
the calls that we were having at the time was really to help us to gauge what was likely to happen in a couple of months' time or maybe uh, six or seven weeks' time because we knew that whatever was going through at that point would have an impact or would affect what we could expect in, 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 a sort of in, in, two, in six weeks to eight, two months' time. The other important point to remember, Craig, is obviously like, again, we, you know, we have a forecasting uh, tool and system in place already. These forecasts had already been put in to the system for the year ahead. Now, obviously, those forecasts are always being updated as a normal course of business, and you wouldn't have expected those forecasts to dramatically change. But in this case, we had to expect it could be a huge impact to those forecasts. So that's the other reason we were watching and looking closely at what was happening on the ground or the coal face, as I said, so that we could help to qualify some of those forecasts that we're going to have that may have been impacted, you know, sort of um, in that window. Yeah, this is, this is really interesting. You know, you have, in a sense, talked about um, the need for earlier information and indicators in times of, well, in times of change, this dramatic environment. And, you know, you also use the term lag. And I, I just spoke to one of your uh, fellow countrymen just a few days ago about alternative data. And we talked about lag data. Um, as one element. So data that's older, uh, data that's not as relevant, um, and you know the, the idea of the need for more current information. And you just gave another great example for that. Um, just like, how, how, can we, how can we see something more contemporaneously and how will that impact us, right? There's, there's a potential for a major change and you've seen it. And so what are the early indicators? And that th this has been... Uh, fascinating um, and, and understandable. And, and the fact that you also use the word lag uh, uh, when he used the term lag data was, uh, was, was fun for me intellectually to hear that. Oh, good. Yeah. And I think, again, just to, to reiterate the point, uh, it's, you know, for us, it's, it's, it's in a normal cycle. We have um, you know, peaks and troughs like any business, and we know what the kind of, typical variance that might occur from one month to the next. And it does vary, you know, it could be like, for example, you know, what's happened in Texas with the uh, abnormal weather that they've had, that affects our business to a degree, you know, how people can continue to, you know, sort of to, to, to conduct their, their, their orders and what have you. Um, so we, we, we adjust our forecast based on those sort of factors that we come across. But this was something new. This was something that was going to be, unknown in terms of the, the period, how long it would last, the impact. We didn't quite know that at the outset how much it would impact the customers. And I guess in terms of what else could have happened, that was always going to be the, the, the kind of unknown unknown that we were having to keep an eye on. Royston, thank you so much for your, your comments uh, and your time. You've been very generous um, in appearing on multiple podcasts. Thank you so much. You've reached the end of another episode of the Treasury Update podcast. Be sure to follow Strategic Treasurer on LinkedIn. Just search for Strategic Treasurer. This podcast is provided for informational purposes only, and statements made by Strategic Treasurer LLC on this podcast are not intended as legal, business, consulting, or tax advice. For more information, visit and bookmark strategictreasurer.com.